So we've had this uh, Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus for about 16 months, and um, I'm just doing a, two, two videos on it. One is a 16 month review, like everything I can think about, and one is a review of uh, aftermarket products I've collected over, the, over that time. This one is focused on the one year, I mean 16 month review. So this is my 16 month rundown of ownership of the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Um, just gonna go through this as quickly as possible, but covering every single thing I can think about with ownership of the car in those 16 months. So first of all, there's the, the ordering process, which I think is the easiest, simplest, quickest ordering process for a car imaginable. It's really like, uh, I, it, it's so quick and easy and including the financing process, which, I thought would be a little more painful, a little longer. It just was really quick and simple. Um, so that was a nice surprise, um, almost shockingly uh, quick. And um, yeah, really, it's like, uh, I can't imagine buying a, a car another way now. Uh, the delivery process was also fast and easy. Um, the the delivery people were super friendly and, and professional, had the, the minimal paperwork you know we needed ready and uh, walked me through the car. And uh, it was really easy, fun, exciting, of course. Uh, first time getting a new car. Uh, so it was a lot of fun to do that. Um, the uh, Right after I got the car, a few days after I got the car, as a kind of joke to troll people who had, you know, there was a lot of hype back then about quality issues, whatever. Um, sort of FUD from, from critics and naysayers. And uh, I wrote an article, all the problems with our new Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. And um, the article was blank. So it, it got, a lot of people loved it and a lot of people hated it. Uh, but really was, uh, several people said it was their favorite article ever from, from us. So um, a blank article can win the day sometimes. Uh, but since then, I've had we've had just minor issues with the uh, with the Model 3, I'll get to get to those um, in a bit. We'll just take a short break from a, a sponsor, uh, Climate Launchpad, which hosts a great climate uh, awards competition every year. Uh, here's a quick quick video uh, about their recent awards. This is the day that we've all been working towards. After three days, finally, we're going to know the winners of this year's Climate Launchpad. It's time for us all to agree that there is no time for short-term fixes. There is only one ecosystem, and we should preserve it. We need to look at what is needed. As long as you are willing to change the rules of the game you are in. 10,000 euros and eternal fame for winning the Climate Launchpad 2020 is Castex. Oh my God! Oh my God! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> A big surprise here in the studio. <laughs> If you follow Clean Technica closely, you've seen our Tesla Model 3 long-term review. You know that I don't have home charging, haven't had a home charging at all here in Florida. So we've gone 16 months with this, before that nine months with a BMW i3 Rex, with no home charging. It's quite easy here because uh, there's a lot of charging stations at places we go, like um, the grocery store, tar uh, well not Target, but near Target, the mall, and um, some parks. So it's quite easy to charge. There's a supercharger behind Whole Foods where, where we do quite a bit of shopping. So, um, yep, I'm one of those people. Uh, so yeah, we we have quite easy charging and, and it's all free everywhere. There's no paid charging that I'm aware of in this area. So I've spent $0 charging in that whole time. Of course, with the supercharging, I'm not sure if I've not sure if I've used more than a thousand miles, which is what you would get if you use a referral code when buying a Tesla. Uh, it's possible. Um, I I have a lot of referral miles, so I don't really pay attention. Um, but yeah, a, you know, luckily zero dollars supercharging as well, and we do that. We didn't used to do that a lot. We used to do more slower charging when before COVID, when you could sit and have a coffee, eat lunch, uh, work somewhere for a while. Um, that was quite nice. <laughs> I mean, we liked doing those things, and it was easy to slow charge while doing them. Now with um, COVID, you know, it's like in and out in the store as quickly as possible. The kids never go in, so they just they sit in the car and watch a show or something or movie or play a game on the infotainment system, which is just uh, 
a true world wonder. I love the infotainment system. And um, so we have less time to sit at a slow charge and charge. So I do, I do more supercharging now. Um, theoretically, I could go work in the car someplace, but you know, I don't really want to go out of my way. So what we often do is just supercharge uh, once or twice a week. Um, I guess probably, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's quite easy from my perspective in my area, for my situation. I, of course, I work on the computer, so I don't um, have to commute. Um, your, your mileage may, may vary, as, as they say. Uh, one issue that I had, uh, that we had with the car, started a while back, you know, several months back, where the, um, sometimes when you got in the car, it would stink. The air conditioning would come on and it would blow out a stinky smell. Uh, we came to understand that was like a mildew or mold that was, that forms. Basically, the, the air conditioner creates some kind of, um, some moisture, uh, gets left there, condenses there. And in especially in a climate like Florida's uh, hot and humid, it'll turn into mold or mildew or something, um, and uh, yeah, stink for a few moments briefly while you after you turn on the car. I don't know why it didn't happen all the time. It's sometimes it happened, sometimes it didn't. Um, so I recently went to Tesla service to have tires rotated. Finally. Um, I, should, I guess I waited too long for that. We're over 11,000 miles, and uh, you're supposed to do it like every 6,000, I think, but um, they looked fine. They seemed all right. So rotated the tires and had them check out that and the um, trim issue I mentioned outside the car, and uh, they cleaned it out. It's a $130 service. They um, didn't charge me on this because... Uh, uh, well, I'm not sure. I, I, I asked about it, and they they decided to drop it. Um, I think perhaps they have like one. They do it one time for you for for free sometimes maybe. Um, or they've had a software update to improve this problem, not have this happen. Although I think even in Florida, my understanding, talking to them and others, is you can't really prevent it in Florida. So eventually we'll have to have it cleaned again. The one tip he, uh, the service guy had was you could, you can turn on the heater for a moment, for a few moments when you are leaving the car, and that would like get rid of the moisture, and that wouldn't happen. But I'm just not going to bother with spending a few moments every time I get out of the car to turn on the heater. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem worth it. So uh, we'll see what happens. Some people have changed it themselves I think um, so might look into that next time uh, the other the only other issues with the car we we thought the glove box was maybe uh, not had not had gotten out of alignment or something there's kind of a, a little uh, area in the corner where it's not really aligned with the other part of the car um, my wife noticed it a few weeks ago and so when I brought it into the service center, I had them check on that. Turns out that's normal. They took it out, put it back in compared to other cars, but they're like, uh, the other cars were the same. So, so just how it is. So, um, it's not a trim issue. It's just the design. Um, and we hadn't noticed it for like ever. So just, I think, you know, had sort of started looking for things too much. Um, one other, the only other issue I think was, uh, I think one time when I leaned into the car to get something, I leaned on the seat with my knee quite hard. And um, after that, it was getting kind of a kind of soft, like popping sound for a while. Um, like every time I sat on it, sometimes when I moved around, uh, it started going away, but when I, but still here and there. So when I took to the service center, I asked them about that as well but they couldn't reproduce it, so they didn't know. But um, it still happens once in a while. It doesn't really bother me. I just thought I should maybe check to make sure it doesn't lead to other problems or have, you know, mess up the seat. But um, but yeah, they couldn't reproduce it, so they didn't do anything with it. Um, that is it for issues, I think. Uh, we had one uh, very soon after getting the car. We had a r big rock, I think, hit the glass roof while we were on the interstate and it created a little chip and we were concerned we had to get that fixed. Uh, it's not, in Florida you have one free windshield replacement a year 
and um, we were hoping that would be count, but it doesn't. It's a different thing, so it doesn't count. Um, that's what I went to the service center about what, last year, and they looked at it and agreed with my assessment, which was quite small. It wasn't spreading, and it wasn't worth paying five thousand dollars to have the whatever I think that's what it was to have the uh, some some rather expensive amount to have the glass roof replaced. Um, but that's all of the issues I can really think about. Uh, once in a while, the screen might reset on its own or need reset on its own. We spend a lot of time watching stuff and playing games in the car because um, we we have a daughter in elementary school, another who's not, and we uh, yeah we spend a lot of time in the kind of pickup line area, pickup area. Um, and also sometimes char charging as well, as I mentioned. One of the only minor things I've had fixed is, uh, see here it's very, um, it's even with the car pretty much, this chrome trim, uh, nothing to notice really there. But um, on the other side, this one got a little bit out, a little bit off, uh, off alignment, you know, a little bit of a gap there. So when I went to the service center to have my tires rotated, I just asked them to, look at it and if it was worth, you know, making it tighter to do it, and they did. Um, and they just basically, it looks like, stuck some kind of uh, black glue in there. Uh, otherwise, I don't have any trim or quality issues with anything like that. Um, nothing, nothing really notable. And I thought that I would not use the aero rims because I didn't like how they looked until I got the car. Once I got the car, I was sort of fine with them. My wife likes them. So I decided to just leave them on all the time. One aftermarket product I have to put in still is some um, extra lights in the floor area of the car from Evianix. We'll be doing that soon. And uh, one thing I will do eventually, I think, is get this gloss, black gloss covered with, wrapped in, uh, seen a nice white option. Um, Look at the options but the, the black gloss is not my favorite thing and it's probably my least favorite thing in the car and it's just you know smudge is easy gets dirty and i'm not really into the glossy look but uh, there's some great aftermarket matte options um i think that's it i think that's all the probably missing something some aftermarket product here i hang my mask here of course and a nice hat from um great uh drink company that actually uses electric vehicles um i'm forgetting the name i'm gonna have to i will overlay the, the name in a moment but uh they gave us some free drinks after we talked to them about their chevy bolt that they use to transport the drinks in one of the most wonderful things about a tesla that uh it's very hard to explain like i've read about it even when we had a shared tesla model s in europe we experience the benefit, but it's not the same as having a car every day and, and experiencing it is all of the software updates, the firmware updates. Um, it's really hard to explain. It's, it's not like an Apple update. You actually get substantive major improvements and it's a lot of fun. And they, they just, they sometimes enhance the car so much you feel like you get a new car. You feel, you feel like it's a Christmas present or something. Uh, so, it's just a real excitement and added value of a car where you, you feel like it gets refreshed routinely. And I mean, there's many, I've had it uh, increase the range, increase the performance of the acceleration, um, add a bunch of new features like Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, Spotify. Um, it's added a bunch of autopilot or full self-driving features um, since I've had it, you know, like stopping at stoplights, uh, and soon, you know, full self-driving beta. So it's really, it's just, it's done so much. I'm trying to see if I'm forgetting something, but there's there's a bunch of little updates, but you know, then these major ones as well that just bring so much to the, to the vehicle. Uh, so as I noted in the aftermarket video, um, the, the, the roof does get quite, uh, the heat comes through it quite a bit here in Florida. Um, so for a while I was I would put on a hat to block the heat um then I had the idea and and reading a, a great series on energy efficiency of the model 3 by 
Danny Parker in which he was um, advocating for a pilot mode where we could get more access to more information about the car. Uh, he he d delved into ex enormous depth. He's been an uh, energy efficiency and solar researcher for decades at the Florida Solar Energy Center, and he he recommended putting this this strong sunshades in the in that uh, under the glass roof to block the heat, and that pushed me to finally do it. And I did it, and it was I wish I had done it way earlier. It was really a good idea. It really keeps it cool here in the summer and um, the early fall and late late spring. In Florida when it's quite hot and you just really need to block out that heat. I guess you know window tinting might work but even even with that Danny has that and he he recommended the, the heat shield. So we have these EVNX uh, heavy duty pro heat shields that do a tremendous job of making it cooler in here um, in the hot on the hot days. Uh, the, the other downside um, is there is a bit of road noise and wind noise in the car at high speed I guess at any speed, but more high speed. Um, this was a this was one of the biggest surprises um, of the car. I didn't recall. I didn't expect it to be that that loud. I uh, now we're sort of used to it, but still, if you're going high speed, it's not it's not great for having a conversation in the car or something. It's uh, it can get quite loud. Um, they did start adding more insulation in the, the Model Three at some point either right before or right after we got a car so i don't know if our car has that i have to compare it to a new one but i feel like it doesn't so um i think it's better now but i think it's still still not the quietest car at high speed of course at low speed there's no engine noise it's really beautiful quiet uh, car to drive and uh the one of my favorite features of the car is autopilot. I use it every day. It's much of the time I, I drive. It's just a, you know, some people are concerned that it's it reduces awareness and and um, attentiveness and is reduces safety. I have the opposite opinion from using it. I think it really you don't have to focus on keeping the car in the lane or even changing lanes if you use that feature, which I, I do like to use. Uh, so it's much easier to scan around, uh, watch the you know, horizon or the surrounding areas, keep an eye on things, keep an eye on other cars, uh, not have to worry about focusing on the road. I do, uh, I do focus on the road as well because you ha you, sh you have to end. There are potholes in a lot of places here, so I disengage routinely. This is when I, I disengage to get around a pothole, and then I engage again. So I'm constantly watching out for potholes um which again i think you know i'm more attentive than if i was sort of mindlessly just driving and doing that uh so i think it for my case at this level increases attentiveness and awareness uh when changing lanes you know it's got some such great visibility you don't have to worry about turning into a car in a blind spot it's not going to do that um of course what but that gives you the ability to really you don't have to worry that it's in the lane or not in the lane, so you can really look around well and um, I think make a safer lane change. So I use that a, a lot. Uh, overall, I think it's just the best car in the world. We had a Model S that I I loved uh, in many regards. It's a used Model S actually right, right next to us, that, like the one we had. And um, I... Uh, I just feel like this car is way more complete. This car feels smoother, feels more like a complete car, not like a, um, it's like more of a final product for Tesla than a step along the way. Uh, I love the minimalism. I absolutely love the minimalism. It's one of my favorite things that I, I can, really cannot imagine going back to knobs and buttons and those things and uh, I would not enjoy it. Um, I love the clean look, the screen. The screen is really easy to use. The Model 3 and Model Y, I think, are better for from a user's perspective. I mean, of course, it depends on what you value, but because of the, the horizontal screen, which I think just makes uh, for much nicer infotainment experience, um, watching Netflix movies or shows, YouTube videos, music videos, um, playing games. It's just, uh, I think the Model S and Model X have to switch this at some point because it's such a better experience. Um, it's the only reason, and it is a reason I would prefer a Model Y over a Model X. Um, it's just uh, 
that much better, I think. So that's a part of the card I, I tremendously appreciate. I, at some point I tried to, you know, when people ask you what you think of the car, you, you have to sort of think of a quick response. So one word that came to mind many times, magical, it's kind of, have, has, has kind of a magical experience feeling, uh, the way it drives, the, the infotainment system, the autopilot. And, but the, the word that I settled on for like the best word for it is, aside from like perfect or best, is it's smooth. It's just all around smooth. Everything about it from the seating, the, the minimalist design, the inf infotainment screen, the touch screen, simple touch, touch screen, the autopilot, the driving experience, everything, the, the look from the outside is just smooth. So I love the, the smoothness of the vehicle. Uh, the white, um, one of the biggest questions we had was whether to get the white seats. And I'm very happy, I'm super happy we did. It's one of my favorite decisions because they're so soft. The, the white vegan leather on, is a bit softer than the black vegan leather, which is also nice, um, but it is a softer softer feel. And I mean, you really, I mean, I notice it every day. I think my wife does. We we appreciate the just super soft feel of the white seats. They look beautiful sometimes, like when you're looking into the car in the evening or something, um, they have a beautiful look in my opinion. Um, the white and black contrast is just, uh, I love it. I love the white and black contrast on the doors. Um, and overall just i think it just looks beautiful so uh that's my 16 month opinion of it i'm trying to think if i forgot anything else we do have many articles in our tesla model 3 uh long-term review which includes long-term reviews of several model 3s because we have few writers with model 3s um or several and uh the Mo tesla model 3 standard range plus long-term review which is uh, in the articles under the tagged. Um, so uh, all kinds of smaller articles about long-term ownership. But I think that covers basically everything. The whole experience is so easy and, as I said, smooth and enjoyable that uh, I don't think there's any any option that compares at all to, to owning a, a Tesla Model 3 or Model Y. Um, so that's it, yeah. Uh, I just finished that I'm wearing a nice, a fun uh, Cybertruck t-shirt from Evianix that I, that I love, Cybertruck plug and play. And um, yeah, check in next time to get your electric fix and uh, enjoy your life. Uh, one thing I forgot to sort of highlight, I guess, is uh, getting the, the Tesla Model 3 standard range plus with 250 miles of range was a bit less than that when we bought it, but the range increased from a software update. Um, I actually don't notice really what the range, if that is the range, because we use the percentage option, the battery, and I just don't really think about it or worry about it much. But um, I decided from have, having owned a couple of electric vehicles, I really didn't need anything more than the standard range plus offered. I couldn't imagine paying more for range I didn't feel like I needed. So yeah, that's why we got the standard range plus, and um, I don't, uh, I never regret I. I I don't feel any need for a long range Model 3 or vehicle, electric vehicle. So for our case, it's super adequate. Of course, it would be convenient, especially with no home charging to um, to have more range, to charge a little bit less, but it's not really like a big, it's not really a, something I even really, uh, I wouldn't, yeah, I would get the standard range plus Model 3 again.